Good morning. Good morning. Ready to get salty? It's time for Faith Art Journaling. <laughs> Woo! Good morning, Woo! salty people. Good morning. <laughs> the same salt. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Good morning, ladies. How are you? Good morning. Good, good, good. <laughs> My name is Everyone is good. Did you let your light shine this last week? <laughs> yeah. did. I hope so. <laughs> well, for, for me, um, Saturday, Halloween night was uh, very rainy, very stormy. So on one hand, I was kind of glad because I kind of kept people from my doorway to keep Corona away. <laughs> on the other hand, um, I did have some goodies that I wanted to make sure that I got out. I had little baggies that said, um, Jesus is the light. And I had little goodies. Good morning, Lily. So glad you're here to join mm -hmm. us. Make sure to get your salt ready to get salty. <laughs> but this last Halloween, um, I had 50 bags and each individual bag had, of course, some candy wrapped up, but it had a little flashlight that said, Jesus is the light and a little coloring book and some little crayons. And it was all Christian based. And uh, I thought that it was just a great way to reach families and children for the Lord, you know, plant some seeds, water some seeds on a night that there's so much darkness. Um, but however you choose to uh, share your light, uh, it's so important to do each and every day. And today when we talk about salt of the earth, it's very similar in theme. So very excited to continue this theme about uh, sh being a light in this world of darkness and being salt of the earth. We look like the astronauts. Are you ready? <laughs> we are ready. <laughs> we are ready for takeoff. <laughs> so good morning out there to any of you that are out there joining us. My name is Genevieve. And I am co-hosted here with my two beautiful friends, Annabelle, the coffee drinker, <laughs> yes. and Barb, the quiet, soft-spoken one. <laughs> so now I won't say anything, no. <laughs> and me, the giggly one. But we're going to play through journaling, where we share our love for the Lord, our love for art, and our love for each other. And most importantly, we're so happy to share this with you. So get some paper, some pencils, some stuff to, to uh, draw and color with, and we will be on our way. If you don't have something to uh, use, we do have starter kits uh, to get you started in case you're wondering, you know, what do I get? How can I even start this? Well, we have a basic kit and a premium kit. So you have two choices and those will give you a mixed media journal book and it will give you a wonderful accessory bag that's embroidered with all sorts of goodies that you can use for faith art journaling or any journaling or art of your choice. And on our website as well, we have our weekly lessons made available for you all. And they are meant to be printed and you can keep them in your own notebook like I have here. Whoops, sorry. There we go. Bible journaling outside the Bible because we do a different take on Bible journaling because we journal outside of the Bible and with mixed media uh, techniques and we can keep samples in a notebook uh, if you'd like to. And one thing that I do like about this is you can put page protectors and put extra clip art, extra samples in case you want to work on it again another day or share it with someone else. Or my dream in prayer is for everyone to start their own group, you know, be it a, a group of children, Sunday school, women's group, group of in the neighborhood, whatever it may be. But this is meant to be shared. So try to, to share this with other ladies and other people that you think may be interested. So I know today is gonna be a little bit of a quirky day being election day. So we might have a low turnout, but you can always watch replays. So please be sure to like and share all our videos because we need to share the word of God. And this is such an easy and fun way to do it. And be careful out there because this is a crazy time, especially with the elections and protests and things of that nature. So just be watchful and uh, be careful out there. So before we continue, let's go ahead and bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer. 
Let's bow our heads. Dear God, I want to thank you for the gift of this, this moment, dear Lord, to be together and to seek you and to just dive into your word and to experience fellowship and this, these experiences with art techniques that just help us to focus more on you, dear Lord, and less on ourselves and the crazy world around us, dear Lord. May it all fill our hearts and our mind so that we can grow in your wisdom. Guide us in everything that we do and in our conversations. And, and please be with our country, dear Lord. Everyone, no matter who is voting for who, let everyone uh, be respectful of each other's differences and just uh, hold each other in your light, dear Lord, in this world of darkness and help everyone to be safe and to be watchful. In Jesus' name, we pray and we thank you, dear Lord. Amen. Amen. So, how about giving away a prize? Ready for a prize? Yes. Who's not ready for a prize? Carol, good morning. Hi, Carol. Oh, okay. Oh, recently, look at this. I recently made a cake and drew the bear one and others burdens and gave it to my neighbor. Oh, that's beautiful. That, that is so sweet. Awesome. Amen. Amen. I never thought about sharing faith art journaling on a cake. So kudos to you, Carol. Idea. For that idea. That's so true. Now you, you have my, my wheels turning. You could make even cupcakes and yeah. put like a little flag on the cupcake, mm -hmm. with a little part of the verse, mm -hmm. with more blessings or something of that nature. <clears throat> so I have a feeling, Carol, you may start a trend with your girl, <laughs> put it on a cake. Yes. That's a fantastic idea. And uh, Annabelle and I, uh, not too long ago, I think it was on Pure Flix, we saw yeah. Sweet Sensations, I think, or? I think so. Sweet but it was Sweet, sweet Expectations, something like that. <laughs> It was so cute, yes, was. but the whole theme of the bakery was sharing scripture. Yeah. So with every cupcake or donut, they would share a, they would a, a, yeah, a verse or something on there. Yeah, it was oh, really it was nice. That's a great idea. Right? And it's so funny how sometimes we take for granted those little touches that can really make such a difference mm -hmm. in the world. So thank you, Lily and Carol, for joining us and everybody else that's uh, out there. We are so excited. So let's get our lesson blessing winner picked out. So first of all, let's see what fun prizes they have. So this is going to be a beautiful scrapbook album, and it's got 10 page protectors inside. Once again, you can use this for scrapbooking, for photos, and for faith art journaling, however you see um, fit. And look how beautiful, you may want to put this right in the front page. It says, those who, have, who, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength from Isaiah 40, 31. Isn't that beautiful? And this is a good startup mm -hmm. page because you can definitely paint around it some pretty flowers. You can do some stenciling around it or mm -hmm. just some, some color, idea. splashes of ink, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So much that you can do. I like that. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Very nice. So, but that's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little extra in case you haven't noticed already. I love to give. I love a little extra. Extra. Uh, so this is an ink and stamp kit. Mm. It's a whole tub mm. of fun. Look at this. Wow. A whole tub of fun. So if you look here in the background, you can see some of those beautiful stamps that are available. Wow. One little tub of fun. So lots of things that say happy and smile and all sorts of fun. So who would like to be the winner? <laughs> Drum roll, please. Drum roll. All right. <laughs> All righty. Let's see. Oh, Janae Butler. Woo! All right, Janae. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yes, yes, you are the lesson blessing winner of this week. So I'm going to put your name right there in the box so I can hopefully get that shipped out to you. So how do you get a chance at winning? Well, after our class, be sure to take a picture of your page and share it on social media uh, and tag us or direct message us. So be sure to do it. It doesn't have to be today. It can be all during this week, but it's so important to uh, just share it. And we're doing that also so that we can help share the word of God, which is so important, especially in these dark, crazy times, isn't it? Yes. People need hope. Jennifer, good morning. So glad you could join us. We're getting ready to get salty. So here we go. <laughs> All righty. So I'm going to dive into the art part today. 
because there's some drying time involved. So we're going to start there and then I'm going to backpedal. But most importantly, let me share our Bible verse for today. I have a couple that are wonderful verses. There's so many that are wonderful. It's so hard to, to choose, isn't it, ladies? It is. It is. And when you hear one verse, it reminds you of another. Mm -hmm. And it just, it's like a domino effect. And it's hard to, to know which one to pick and when to stop, <laughs> isn't it? God's word. More than one. <laughs> That's true. I can do more than one. Do more than one page. Because <laughs> page. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Double page layouts are great. Mm -hmm. You can do two variations. So you can have two pages that actually complement one another and work together. Like I know that Barb's done that a few times. Or you can do like Annabelle, I know, has done two totally different pages with two totally different techniques. You know, so these lessons are, are meant to start today. You don't have to finish it today. You can finish it throughout the week. And you may end up getting your own idea and do something that looks nothing like what we're going to share with you today. And that's fantastic. That's great. And even more so, we'd love you to share it with us so that we can just be inspired and encouraged with, with each other. But today's primary verse uh, is you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? Is it then good for nothing? So salt has a purpose, right? Yes. And if it doesn't serve that purpose, what is it good for? I keep thinking of that wrong that rock song. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was that took a twist. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> I remember it. It's so yeah. nice. Remember it? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, she draws and she sings. <laughs> <laughs> but I do choose to laugh instead of cry in life. And I, I, it is a gift. And it's just so, this is so enjoy, enjoyable. I love to spend time with you ladies and I love doing this. So it is so much fun. So let's get started with the art. So you can use uh, these primarily are with fine salt. If you don't have fine salt, that's okay. You can work with coarse salt. And we'll definitely show you some tricks about that. So fine salt or coarse salt. If you don't have some, find it now. And food coloring or ink. There are all sorts of wonderful little bottle inkers. Or you can get food coloring and put just a little bit in a little mm -hmm. cute coffee cup or any little container. Um, it could even be a cap from the top of a, a bottle or something, like a two-liter bottle or anything. I usually always keep these around. If you have small children, please don't leave them around. Very dangerous. Make sure that you only keep really big ones that they can't swallow and choke. And watch out for your dogs. You dog lovers, you. <laughs> so, and um, they have these cool little droppers. Or you can use old eyedroppers. Yeah, that's true. All right. You know, use old eyedroppers. Eye there goes the optometrist down there. All right. We are starting on YouTube, Barb. <laughs> Hi, Betty. Yay, Betty! Yay. <laughs> Join us. Talk Get your salt, Betty. Get your salt on. Yes, yes. We are definitely going to get our salt <laughs> on. And let me do some sharing. All righty. So in our advertisement of today's lesson, this is one of the samples, and it was the primary sample. And I would like to share at this point that on the online lesson, they do have a salt shaker clip art, and there is the clip art of a section of earth, a whole earth globe that you can cut, color, and paste. So if you get the lesson online, those two clip arts will be included. And if not, you can just draw or go online and print an idea off of images when you Google something. So uh, be creative. And here in the S-A-L-T, You'll notice I put glue. I used this wonderful clear glue. That's very important that it's clear. And this is part of the kits that we offer. Love this glue because it's got the, the fine tip on one side that we're going to be using today. And then the, the thicker end on the other side. So you can do a lot with this one glue. And what we did was I put the glue on each letter very thick and then i sprinkled the salt on it i let it dry just a little bit and then i carefully dropped ink 
in each section. And you'll notice how it gets like a tie dye effect because it spreads. So I love how it spreads because we're meant to be salt on the earth, just like we're meant to have our light shine in a world of darkness. It's supposed to spread it. We want to be salty all over the earth, right? So we want to spread like that ink is going to spread and the colors are going to mix and continue to change as it goes around. So I pick at least two or three colors. Three is usually the magic number when you're picking colors. So something very light, something, you know, close to it. And it doesn't have to be these colors. It can be any color. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, something else that kind of complements it nicely. And then if you're not happy with your color, remember, you can put it in a little container, add some water, and it's so easy to lighten it up. So you put one, one color at a time? Yes. Yes. Okay. I put the yellow first. Let that then spread and then put the other. Okay. And then I put the green and then I put a little more red. Okay. And the same thing here. I always start light to dark. Okay. So here I did the the orange, the well yellow, but it looks a little orange because I didn't dilute it at all. I left it concentrated and then a little red and then the green. And remember, the primary colors are going to be mixing and you're going to get new colors, which that's another lesson we're going to do. We're going to be offering a color mixing and matching uh, class, which is going to be a lot of fun. So with this one, I did salt here and I used lighter co colors. I diluted everything so that it would be a pastel color. And then I just put a little salt over here in the salt sh shaker so it looks like it's coming out. So right here I did the technique of gluing. Oh, hello. And put salt there. Hello, I don't know. <laughs> I put the salt before the glue. Okay, <laughs> wake up. I don't think I need to say that, but yes, ladies, you have to put the glue first and then the salt. And I let that check it for those of us that are not thinking too well this morning because wow. it's fluffy. <laughs> this is my sleeper. <laughs> Start with a pencil and sketch out what you're going to do after you sketch it with your pencil, then you can go ahead and go in with the glue and then the salt. But if you notice this one, I just did it curvy and I kind of mixed it up there, but this area was salt. Here I just did dots with a marker. I didn't put salt there, although you could put a little bit scattered if you'd like to. Yeah. And um, and I left the earth out of that one. So there's lots of different ways. This was, was the very first one that I did when I was just playing with the technique of the salt and the ink. Now, I would like to mention when you put salt on top of it, it's going to be globby and clumpy. It's like thick, thick glitter. If any of you used glitter when you were yeah. young, how many of you guys would um, glue glitter down when you were young in art class and things uh, of that nature, projects, and you just get glitter everywhere, right? Yeah. So you kind of put the glue, put the salt, and, and let it sit a little bit, and then you want to dump off the extra, and you can tap it like that on the background. You don't want to rub it because if it's not totally dry, you'll just smear it and make a mess. So tapping is your friend to tap it all off and then let tap, it tap, 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 tap. Exactly. So here's <laughs> another one that I just got really colorful with. That's really pretty. I like how that's oh, red. Those colors oh. are awesome. It's gonna wanna spread depending on how wet like your ink is and how much you yeah. add to it. You may like that, like Annabelle was liking that. And on one hand, for me, it gives me the idea of spreading the salt, spreading the light, you know, spreading the word of God, which is so important. I have a question. Do yes. you have to put like ink, ink, or can you do like watercolor ink, like watercolors or? Yes, but you have to be careful with watercolor. This was water-based ink. Okay. That I use. And I have. Okay. Now, if you're going to use watercolor, you have to be careful because it's going to be more water than color. Oh, okay. It's not going to be it's dark. Pigment color. You don't want to add too much water because then it's going to spread a lot and make a big mess. Okay. Got it. Got it. And then, so, oh, what I was saying is you can do it like that or while you're 
putting on the ink and before it's totally dry, you can get a paintbrush, a dry brush to kind of shape it. And that's what I kind of did with some of them. You'll notice the difference. This one is still drying. I did this one quick yesterday. Definitely gonna have to vacuum this room after this. <laughs> so this one, I just had some fun with some bright colors. And I did the first one, a mix of all the colors. And then I did each letter, a different color. Ooh. So that's another way. I kind of like the mixing of the colors. And here I actually used four colors because the S was so big. Interesting. Here's another one, how salty is your life? And on this one where the salt structure is coming out, I put live salty. And I don't know if you can tell, but there's salt there. Yeah, that's cute. I like that. I salty. Sat there and I, I glued salt in this section. So I got the earth, just did it down here. You are the salt of the earth. And then the salt shaker up there. And then this one is my favorite. It's a little crazy, but I love the colors. That is pretty. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. This one was a lot of fun, just playing with colors. Now this one, I'd like to share that I did differently. This one is in layers. This one, I did a background page um, that I just inked up with some sprays. It was a plain background, just like this one is kind of inked up. And then separately, I did You Are the Salt of the Earth, and then I glued it. So this giant salt shaker I did on another paper, and then I cut it out and glued it here. I also did the earth on another paper, and then cut it and glued it here. Uh, because I just had fun with the whole coloring, and I didn't want to worry about having to cover all that background color. It was easier just to add something on. If you have a very dark and loud background, if you go to draw on it with pencil, you're not going to see it very well. And anything that you put on top of it, you're going to have to make sure that it kind of covers those colors. So by doing it this way, I was able to do a very big and bold background, but still be able to focus on the Bible verse. Okay. Got it. Yep. Now, this one, I did not cut and paste anything. This one, I actually did the coloring around it. And I just drew directly on the paper. There's no color cut and paste on this one. It was all part of one. So this one was pretty cool because what I did was I did the outline of a salt shaker and then just fit oh. inside of it. Oh, then like that. So start by the outside. And then you fill in the inside, once again, in pencil, because usually on your first take, you're going to do something a little too small or too big. And you're going to have to adjust the sizing of it, which is natural and very normal. So hopefully you have an idea of what you want to do. Do you want to just, oh, and this I splattered. And I liked that because it kind of made it look just like um, the salt kind of being spread, you know, and, and shaken across the earth. For that technique, I actually used a splatter brush, which you don't have to use. You can splatter with anything, but this is a plastic brush that is very skinny and flat. Um, it works well just to kind of go like this and you tap the color. Mm -hmm. And if not, you can just splatter with anything. You can splatter with a brush by having ink or paint on the brush and doing the same thing. Stick your finger out and then you hit it and you tap it like that and you can splatter around. Hmm. Amen? So decide what you're gonna do. Are you gonna do everything on one page or are you gonna do something separate? Hmm. Okay. Sure. Or are you going to play with the salt and ink and see how it blends? Or you can use just the salt as an accent on part of your art. Amen? Yeah. yeah. So, so many options. All have some ideas. 
Yeah, I'm gonna fill you up with some ideas. And actually, I have one more idea. And as I share this idea, I want you all to be thinking about salt. And here's one that I started. Ooh, pretty. Color colors, aren't they pretty? Yes. So this one, I added the glue, I added the salt, and then I added some bright color ink. And when I did it, it was a little too wet. And look what happened. Oh. Mm. Has that ever happened to you guys? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so what do you suggest we do? Gesso it. You can gesso it. Gesso is like a primer, a very um, opaque, white, paint-like covering. Mm -hmm. Or I, I did white paint. I got white paint. And I did this part with white paint. Oh, yeah. So you can tell this part was with white paint. Any other ideas? Mm -hmm. How about out there, ladies? Do you have any Washi ideas? Washi tape. You can use washi tape. Yeah. You could cut out something and put it on top of it. <laughs> True. You can just put an embellishment. You right. know, if in doubt, you know, grab a butterfly, right. grab a flower, <laughs> something and just cover there it. You, <laughs> you could also make a tag with the Bible verse and put it right there. Right. <clears throat> That's another idea. Um, you can put. A picture of anything, um, a little cross. If you have like a little cross, you can put there. Or how about even easier? How about, let me move this so I don't make a mess on these things. How about just making the background darker? There you go. Yeah. So I can cover it with that paper. Or actually, instead of paper, we can use plastic. Make a little room here. And with that, you can just go ahead and paint the area around it. Good idea. And something that's fun is if you have a piece of thin, thin plastic, mm -hmm. this is like off of packaging from macaroni or cereals or, or anything like that, or a lot of times it comes in shipping, mm -hmm. you can do uh, one of Vicki Booten's techniques, mm -hmm. Annabelle's favorite lady on, online for, <laughs> she calls this kissing. But when she sprayed that, if you notice, it's really wet. She'll just go like this and pick it up and then she'll put it in other parts. Yeah. And when you do that, you'll see how you'll get some cool oh. techniques. Ooh, and you have control over where you kind of put it. And it just gives a fun little bit of a messy background. <laughs> If you don't have a plastic, you can use um, parchment paper as well. That's absolutely easy. parchment paper or wax paper. Mm -hmm. But you just have to remember that that's dirty before using it again and be sure to, to wipe it off. And um, you can either use wipes to clean up everything that's water soluble, or I got these really cheap little rags that are great. And that way I can reuse them and reuse them. I'm definitely going to share how to draw the bottle. Absolutely. Not a problem. So right here, I just wanted to show you a little bit of damage control. And you, I would keep, I would continue. I would, uh, to control this area, you can, I get lazy sometimes and just go like that with my hand because I'm in a hurry sometimes, you know. But look how, how easily you camouflage that mistake mm -hmm. by adding more color around to the background. Right. So... I'm going to let this dry a little bit and then I'll keep working on it. And Annabelle's idea of the wax paper is great. 
And one of the cool thing with wax paper that she was reminding me that she used a little while ago was crumble art, which actually we have a lesson about that. So that'll be a fun one to share. It talks about not crumbling, and light, but you can use that as like sponge paper painting. Whoever did sponge painting, oh my goodness. And my yeah. parents yeah. Were married, I had a whole wall in the bathroom. Yeah, we all did. Oh yeah, that was but so you, yeah, yeah, it gives you some texture. So that's an easy way to do it. So I'm gonna set that aside. And should I'm, you press should you press the salt down when you glue it? Because mine's not like running a lot, it's just kind of there. Like the ink is not spreading like yours did. What did I do wrong? Do you squish the salt on here? Um, if it's very, very on the surf, on you know, not adhering to it then yes, you can push it down a little bit with a popsicle stick or gently with your finger and just clean up your finger. Maybe it's not dry enough when I put the ink, should it dry a little bit more? No, it should run easier when it's wet. Huh. So right now I just wiped and dried my mat. I'm going to start with a fresh. Good morning, Tammy. So glad you joined us. So I'm going to share the salt. This one is the easiest one. And oh, like I said, also in our starter kit, there's clip art embellishments. So there's some of these that have shadings and much more detail than just printing off the lesson on the internet. But this is included in our uh, starter kits. The premium starter kit has uh, I believe it's like a dozen of these for different lessons to help you get started. So depending on which way you want to do it, because this same salt shaker, if I decide to use it this way, I can use it this way. So remember to feel comfortable moving your paper around, however it is that you're going to place it. So I'm going to, I'm going to do mine at an angle to change it up. And I think I'm going to do the earth over here. So like everything, you need to kind of have a focal point. So, and for the earth, this is even better. Get the salt box if you have one of these big ones, and that can actually be your guide to make a perfect circle. And make sure you have a good eraser so you can erase the lines and always draw lightly so it's easy to erase. But you always want a focal point, you know, where is the light coming from? What is your, your direction? So I'm going to be putting salt here on this earth. So I'm going to start, for me, the easiest part to start is with this part, which is like an oval. So I would do the oval about here and just go very gently. I hold my pencil sideward so that it's very easy to keep control over it being soft. If not, you'll notice like when I did the circle, I did it a lot harder and it makes it harder to erase. And then what you do is you just go erasing around it until you're happy with the shape. So the first step is this oval. And then once you like the shape, then you can go in and make it a little darker. Now with that oval, you're going to want to give it a little depth, which is a little bit of a lip. So you can go like if you're going to make the oval bigger and then just go down and connect that. So I did a smaller oval and then I did a larger oval, just kind of like extended it and reached it out. And then you can do on each side a little hump. So it looks like the neck of the salt. And then from there, this is the harder part is to keep those two lines kind of parallel going in the right direction, you know, each way like that. Because that angle is what's going to make it look more like a typical salt bottle. But if you don't get it right, just erase and do it again. So it's a slight angle that you're going to go out. You don't want it too extreme because then it might look kind of weird. But once again, there's no right and there's no wrong. Or you can cut the salt bottle, bottle out and trace it like me. 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the ideas of the embellishments that come in the starter kit. And also one of the ideas of having the clip art in the um, back of the lesson plan. There's always a section yeah. when it'll have the salt and the earth that you can print it and use it over and over or mm -hmm. cut it and use it as a stencil. Absolutely. That's what I did. Yeah. Totally do that. But in case you have none of them, and then the bottom, the bottom of this one, if you'll see, is kind of tricky. It's got a flat base, and then it goes up at an equal angle on both parts. So to do that, I would flip this over, and I'd want to see, okay, what does my salt shaker look like? Where's the bottom? The bottom's going to be about here, because that's about how big I want it. And then I have to make the, the two angles the same. And once I do that, <coughs> then I'll go back and erase the extra lines. So, Jennifer, I hope that that helped you out a bit. And once again, remember, this is about the process. Yeah. More than the end product, although we all want to end up with something pretty. But we want to enjoy this time together as we reflect in God's word. So, I think that kind of has a great start, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And then I don't know about you guys, but I got all hung up on the earth. Like, wait, what continent is there? And what's the shape of it? Don't even, Seriously? Worry, about, <laughs> don't even worry about it. So mm -hmm. the, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I don't, don't even worry. Nobody's going to notice that. Why would you even think of that? Like, why would you even think of that? That's hysterical. It's a different part of the earth, you know, whatever. So let me just address your question. Uh, here we used salt. We glued first. First, I'm sorry, excuse me. We started with the pencil and wrote the word salt. Oh, how funny. Applied glue and then sprinkled salt on it. Let it dry a little bit and then tapped it off to get off the excess. Once that was off, you grab your food coloring or ink and carefully drop it down you can, you know, use an old uh, eyedropper or something of that nature. And if you want to lighten your color, you can get a little cup with water and dilute it. And then carefully wow. drop the ink and you'll notice like a little tie dye effect, how it'll run across and the colors will kind of mix. And I was uh, suggesting at least two colors or if not, maybe three, three seems to be a magic number. Make sure, you know, you get a lighter color, a darker color. And that was the, the sample for the salt. And once again, if you don't want to do that one, there's plenty other options. You can use the salt just in the salt shaker and not even fuss with the letters because the letters can be kind of tedious depending on your patient's level. You can just write salt really big and play with the uh, food coloring or ink. And then we have this one, which is really careful, um, colorful. That's my favorite. I like that. I like the colors on that one. It's yeah. time by. Here's another one. This was, you can see the salt. And the blue. And this one, how salty is your life? I like the way that I put live salty here because that's the whole purpose of today's discussion is for us to live salty lives. Mm -hmm. Live a life like last week that we talked about a light in the darkness. What does it mean to sh you know shine God's light? It's very similar in being salty. This one doesn't have any salt on it, but it just used the salt shaker and I had some fun with the background, which actually I'm gonna show that in a minute also. And then this one, which is drawn directly on the paper. And I splattered some sprinkles down here to represent the salt sprinkling. So Lily, I hope that helped you. And Jennifer, I hope that uh, that answered your questions. If you have any other questions, ladies, feel free to share, please. And there's one more technique that I'm still <clears throat> working on. In case you don't have fine salt and you have coarse salt, this technique is supposed to be pretty cool for that. And what I did with this one was I'm creating a background and then I'm going to be putting the salt on it and the Bible verse. What I did was I used watercolor and just wiped it in the background. And while it was wet, while the watercolor was wet, I applied some of this coarse salt to it. And I 
set it aside and I let it dry. Now it's pretty dry, so I'm gonna knock off that salt and we're gonna see what happens. And you literally rub it. I don't know if you can hear me scraping it off the page a little bit. You literally rub it off the page. And once you've done that, look at the effect. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah. It gives you a little bit of a texture. Hmm. Yeah. So look how it, the salt causes some of the ink to separate. Yeah. yeah. And it gives it a, a textured effect, but the salt is gone. There's like a couple little spots that have a little bit, but for the most part, it's smooth now, but just with that really cool textured background. And that was with the, the coarse salt. And to be honest with you, I also put a little thin salt. And I'm noticing that the thin salt was a little harder to get off. The coarse salt made more of the bigger marks and came off a lot easier. But now I can just totally paint on top of this and decorate it and it's gonna have this layer of texture. Or I could just leave it like that and look how pretty. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And I can add the scripture here or add the scripture here or put a title. Cause remember, even when you're uh, journaling, you don't have to journal the entire Bible verse. You can journal a uh, part of it. So, as a review, as you guys are all working or letting something dry, I would like to share with you another verse, and it's Colossians 4, 6. And I know that's one that Annabelle uh, was getting excited about to do with her artwork today. And it's, let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know him. Oops. You ought to answer each person. How to answer, you ought to answer each person, sorry. So very important to rely upon uh, on God for our words. Our tongue can be a tool or a weapon. And it's so important to be able to go to the Lord. And there we go. Now it's right. Uh -huh. You may know how you ought to answer each person. We need to go to the Lord. And that's why it's so important to fill ourselves up with the word of God. So what flows out of us is the word of God. That's the light that shines within us. And that's the saltiness that we have uh, that we're going to sprinkle outside on the earth. Right? Yeah. Right. Mark 950, salt is good. But if salt has lost its saltiness, how will you make it salty again? Hmm. Have you ever gotten kind of complacent in your life? Yes. A little stagnant? Sluggish. Right? So sometimes you need to go in your life and change things up and do something differently to make it saltier. Mm -hmm. And salt is so important. I don't know about you, but my husband, he's so funny. He loves salt. And the first thing that he does when he gets a meal, he doesn't even taste it. He puts salt on it. Do any of you know somebody like that? My husband. Really? <laughs> Him too? No way. And my mom. <laughs> wow. My dad, now that I think about it, does the same thing too. With him, it's garlic salt. Yeah. Oh, I love garlic salt. And he'll get garlic salt and whatever it is, he just like pours it all over before even eating it. That's right. <laughs> but can you imagine when you go to the grocery store, let's say you're moving and you're going to fill up your kitchen with the first supplies. What are the first condiments that you pick? Salt and pepper. Right? Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, salt and pepper. Salt is so important. Salt um, yeah. is used for so many different things. It's a preservative. Mm -hmm. In Job 6, 6, can that which is unsavory be eaten without salt? Or is there any taste in the white of an egg? In Genesis 19, 26, but his wife looked back behind him and she became a pillar of salt. So traditionally, salt was so important to use as a purification, as a preservative. Because remember, they didn't have refrigeration back then. And haven't you ever opened up a big pack of chicken and you don't cook all the chicken? What do you do with what's left? You salt it. You yeah. salt it to preserve it, right? Right, away, yeah. Exactly. So mm -hmm. to preserve it is so important. Um, salt is also used for ratifying covenants in the Bible. In Leviticus 2.13, it says, And every oblation of the meat offering shalt thou season with salt. Neither shalt thou suffer the salt of the covenant of thy God to be lacking from thy meat offering. With all thine offerings thou shalt offer salt. So salt played a big, important role in the Bible. 
It's also used for purification. Have you ever put salt on a wound? You gargle oh, yeah. with salt. You gargle with salt, salt and right. And water. So when you get a cold, mm -hmm. you I would say your sinuses, your yep. sinus rinses have salt. Yeah. Yeah. And isn't the beach great? Mm hmm. Yes. The yeah. beach is great for salt. Um, are there any uses for salt that you guys share can share out there? Something that you use that's maybe different with salt? Mm -hmm. I know that my son's gotten into salted caramel cookies. Ooh. So he gets the chocolate chip cookie dough from Tall House regular. And all he does is he cuts up little pieces of caramel, just puts them in, and he sprinkles a little sea salt and puts them in the oven. So easy. So mm, I gotta try that. Right? <laughs> so salt is also used for purification in Ezekiel 16, four. And as for thy nativity, in the day that was born, thy navel was not cut, neither was thou washed in water to supple thee. Thou wast not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. So purification to clean. Um, I know that um, mouth sores a lot of times mm -hmm. um, pain and put the salt in there because it helps it to heal faster, right? Even your feet, you soak your feet in Epsom salt. Yeah, or your whole body. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it's detox too. It helps with detox. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And that all falls under purification. Purification. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They have uh, bath soaks. Uh, they have the lavender one. I love that one. Mm -hmm. It's really nice and it just eases all the, the aches and pains, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. It also melts ice. Think oh, that's it. right. That's right. Uh, when it snows, when it snows in the winter in the cold states, they put ice so the tires won't skid. Ice melts it. Mm -hmm. So you can walk and not kill yourself on thin ice. <laughs> in there, done that. Psalm 147, 16 to 18. It says, He giveth snow like wool, he scattereth the hoar frost like ashes, he casteth th forth the ice like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? He sendeth out his word and melted them. He caused his wind to blow and the waters flow. So the, the word of God can be like salt melting ice. It can soften a hardened heart, can it? Uh -huh. yes. And salt makes you thirsty. Yes. Doesn't There's it? Mm -hmm. When you go to eat, to the movies and you have popcorn, can you sit there and have a bucket of popcorn without a, yeah. a bottle of water or soda mm -hmm. or something? Mm -hmm. No. And actually, soda makes you thirstier, thirstier because it's got sodium in it. It's got salt in it. <laughs> That's why it's dehydrating and, and it, it makes you thirstier. Yeah. It's not um, funny. In John 7, 37, it says, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Mm. So the word of God makes you thirst for more in the same way that salt makes us thirst, right? Mm -hmm. And whenever we are with someone and we share the word of God with someone, we want them to have that same feeling, right? Yeah. You want them to be thirsty for more. Mm -hmm. You know, even today in Faith Art Journaling, I'm hoping you're going to want to read the word of God more. You're going to want to do more art using scripture you know you're going to have that that thirst for the lord and it's easily available uh, salt was something that was accessible uh historically in ezra 6 9 it says and that which they have need of both young bullocks and rams and lambs for the burnt offerings of the god of heaven wheat salt wine and oil according to the appointment of the priests which are at Jerusalem, let it be given them day by day without fail. So it was easily available. So lots you can do with salt and the influences like Colossians 4, 6 that we were sharing a little while ago with your speech. What an impact that can have. Sometimes just a word of encouragement or a word of comfort can make all the difference in the world. Uh, I'll never forget when my son Jacob was uh, diagnosed with cancer and um, he had a stage four lymphoma. And on top of that, he has a heart condition and they discovered the cancer when they were doing an MRI of his heart to see when he needed heart surgery again. So my mind was on heart mode 
And all of a sudden I find out that he has stage four cancer. I fell to the floor and just, I was so distraught. But when I went to talk to him, when I got it together, I just looked at him and he just looked at me and his words were so comforting to me. They were salt. They were light in this, in this world. He told me, mom, don't worry. God's got a plan for you in all this. Mm -hmm. You know, so a young man of, uh, uh, he was what, 23 at the time, had such wisdom. Yeah. You know, there I was, the mom, the one that should be providing the wisdom. But God works in all of us. And, and God works in children. And, and there's no age limit in what he can, who he can work through. And God spoke to me through my son that day to remind me he's got this. I need not to worry. And I'll never forget that. But look what powerful words. He didn't do anything. He didn't even hug me. Nothing. Just, you know, the doctor was in the room and from afar we made eye contact. And he just told me those comforting words. And I'll never forget that moment and the comfort that it provided me. Yeah. Um, with that, ladies, I want you to think about um, a moment that maybe... Uh, you experienced salt in your life and you know have you purified your life with the blood of Jesus Christ those of you watching out there if you have not I encourage you to do so today accept the Lord Jesus as your personal savior God sent him to die on the cross to pay for our sins so we don't have to and we can go straight to heaven by just accepting this gift and in obedience, not because we have to, but because we want to, and we're called to, to be obedient to the word of God. We're supposed to share his love and his word with others. How can God support, you know, Annabelle or Barb that are there next to me if, if I'm not there and willing for him to work through me and her family and friends around her are not willing to work, you know, allow God to work through them. So I encourage you to submit to the Lord and, and be salty and shine that light. Not because we have to, but because we want to. And it's the right thing to do. It's about righteousness. So uh, I think I've talked definitely enough. Uh, <laughs> so Barb, do you have something going on there that you'd like to share? Uh, well, <laughs> I am still working on mine. and um, Oh, very pretty. Can I... Used to oh, break. I like that. So I, oh. I did get the little mistake there. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to deal with that. <laughs> um, however, uh, yeah, I'm still kind of in the planning. I think I'm going to do the earth on the bottom. I haven't finished that yet. So working. What on colors did you use? Could you share that? Yes, I did. I used salty ocean. And um, pickled raspberry and honey, wild honey. So those oh, are pretty. Yeah. Yeah. So, very pretty. Still working on it. <laughs> that's beautiful. I think that those colors are beautiful. Let's see yours, Annabelle. Well, I am. A work in progress too, but <laughs> um, I just colored my background with um, with watercolor. I mean, uh, crayons, which mm -hmm. are so awesome. I, I did it super fast, and I just did this in different colors. I sprayed it with um, some water, and then I took the parchment pa paper, like I had told you, and then just do this all over the place, and it kind of gave it a nice little spread. So what I'm going to do, I like the verse um, 4, 6. So I'm going to make word bubbles because, you know, to go with the phrase, obviously, with the verse. Mm -hmm. And then I was, I cut out my salt shaker. And then I'm just going to, like, put it together here. Um, kind of like spraying the salt. My salt shaker didn't come out really cute, though. I like um, it. It's all right. I like it. And then um, I just put the salt, but my salt, mm, it didn't run very good. I don't know. I might do another one. And it kind of smeared here. This is the first time I do it, like literally. Mm. So it kind of <laughs> smeared. But that's the concept. And then I'm going to spray some salt and then my words. I'm going to put the verses, maybe a couple verses here or something. Mm -hmm. So I like that. In the makings, but a little twist on it. Mm -hmm. 
great. Looking great. Yeah. So that's about it. So I love the idea that Jennifer shared. I don't have food coloring or dauber ink, so I used a wink of Stella. Oh, yeah. Yep. Those glitter pens. Perfect. Yeah. Ah, good that's indeed. a good idea. I'm going to try that. Well, maybe with marker too. Yeah. I know. That's true. If you gently touch the end mm -hmm. of the tip of the marker, it will run. Yeah, I just had a problem with mine spreading. It didn't spread out as well. Maybe because my inks were too thick. I don't know. Yes, it could be. They need to be yeah. watery and fluid. That's why I think that food color actually works the best. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to try that. Thick. If you want to do have that spreading and blending. Yes. Um, yeah component and barb with your mistake the easiest thing is to get white paint and cover up that little section and nobody will be the wiser or once again play with the background um like i did on this one that i'm still working on that i'm right. going to be showing now as well but before we continue with this a little bit i'd like you like you know one of you ladies to share something about uh salty you know what areas of your life need more salt sometimes mm -hmm. we're salty at home but not salty at work or in our friend groups, you know, that's mm -hmm. difficult. That can be difficult and challenging. I know that right now I'm not socializing because of the pandemic, but normally I have several circles of friends depending on what activities we're doing. Mm -hmm. Like if we're gonna go boating, we have this group of friends. If we're gonna yeah. do cooking, we have that group of mm -hmm. friends. Um, depending on what, if I'm gonna go to a movie, I have some friends that love to go to the movies and others don't. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. um, is there an area of your life that you feel like you need to add more salt. You know, at work, it can be challenging where you work. That can be very difficult. I can see how that can be challenging, especially with the chaos in today's society. And mm -hmm. how can you make these areas of your life more salty? So do either of you have something that you'd like to share? I mean, I had a girl yesterday at work, well, a woman, um, that sh she was working with the same attorney for like ever and ever for like over 20 something years and he just retired. So she's now, you know, a little upset because she's looking for something else, but she's on their insurance and they have, you know, she's just very down. So, you know, I poured some salt on her, <laughs> a little bit of salt on her yesterday, <laughs> hoping that would help. Yeah. Um, so things like that, you just run into people that, you know, need a little bit of encouragement, and a little bit of, you know, sprinkle. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, a, a word of kindness can go yes. a long way. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. And especially nowadays. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, I am working on being more disciplined with myself, um, trying to become more rooted in the truth of God's word so that I can be salty out there. You know, so I'm kind of working on myself right now. <laughs> to, yeah. Yeah. I have to do that too. <laughs> you know, but, um, but definitely, um, yeah, keeping your eyes open and seeing those people that God puts in your path to, like you did, Anna, to, to be a light. And, yeah. and Sometimes yeah. people just need to have a little conversation with someone else and Absolutely. share their thoughts, their just being their pain pain a little bit. And then they can relate and they say, oh, I'm not alone, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, being a listener is yeah. so important, too. Yeah. I wonder if anybody else noticed something that you said that is, I think, the most important thing of today's conversation. And I didn't mention it or actually really think about the importance. Something okay. that you said, Barb. Yeah. What, what, what did you say that you're doing? Working on herself? Yep. Yeah. How can you spread salt if yeah. you don't have salt in your shaker? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> think about that yeah yeah that's so yeah. true it is so true mm -hmm. and you know, i'd like to share you know it's it's so easy in this you know crazy time like lily's sharing right now in these days of covid i'm finding how easy it is either to complain about mm -hmm. it or give it into fear and i'm trying to make it a point to point to god first he's got this amen Amen. No faith over fear. It's so, and he did not give us a spirit of fear. I don't know what exactly verse that is, but it's in the Bible. And um, it's so important to focus on that. And it's a daily fight. And we need to fill our salt shakers. 
so that we'll have plenty of salt to be spreading mm -hmm. along. Now we're going to have good days. We're going to have bad days. We're going to have days that we need to fill up ourselves. Like Barb said that right now she's in a, a season of filling herself up so that she can pour out onto other, to others, you know, and um, neighbors, neighbors can be a great, uh, avenue in which to spread God's word. Some of us live in a conducive area that's easy to do that too, and others don't. You know, Carol, I need to be more salty with my neighbors. Difficulty? Because living in a condo, stepping out as a Christian is often scary, but worthwhile. Amen. But give them a cookie. Give them a flower. Give them a little gift. Make a little... Um, I just found out that a neighbor of mine had someone pass away in their family. So I, I'm going to try and make another one of these today that say God bends the broken hearted. You know, this cost me, I think, two dollars. Yeah. You know, it's not the money, you know, bake a cake, yeah. make cupcakes, give them a cupcake. People appreciate the smallest of things and a, a nice gesture. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I find it when you're spreading the, the when you're speaking to somebody, it's always <laughs> easier to have something in hand. Mm -hmm. you, know, you feel like, and you have to remember that it's not about you. It's about the Lord. So we need to be bold for the Lord and that it, it be about him, not about us. If they reject us, they're not rejecting us. They're rejecting the Lord who is in us. That's right. That's and that, that's not our responsibility and not on us. It's on them. Um, something I'm going to go ahead and flip my camera to show you a little something. And actually, first, let me make myself a little bit bigger. Not that I need to be any bigger. I'm big enough. But <laughs> I just wanted to share how I was working on this one that I that had that mistake. You know, look how it's all like blending in. Oh, yeah. No. And um, I just <laughs> I love that to share that. And I was using a little bit of Annabelle's idea with the parchment paper to pick up paper, pick up <laughs> with the paper, and kind of just put it around. You know. So I'm continuing to work on that. And I'm going to write the Bible verse on the inside here because the outside is like so loud and so much going on. But I wanted to mention, you know, look at this mess that I have here of ink, right? What's a great idea to do with this ladies? Do the kissing thing that Vicky does. Put yep. some water on it and put it on paper. <laughs> exactly. So I'm going to get a clean piece of paper you can either use it as kissing on another paper or I just want to clean up my mess right now because this is out of control for me. <laughs> Get a bottle of water and spray it. These sprayers are also in our startup kits. And once you spray it and make sure that it's really wet, you can use the paper just to pick up the ink. Make it nice and juicy and wet. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, it can even be dry since it's water soluble. Some of it was already dry. And I just wet it. And now I'm going to put my paper there. I just threw it there. Ta da! And then just go like this. And if you can notice, look at it squeezing. Mm -hmm. You can see it gushing because I made it nice and wet. Now, the reason I made it nice and wet is that I want the paper to move around, the ink. Look how pretty. That's Ooh, awesome. I need it pretty. Pretty. And then you, if you notice, you have a lot on the top, so I can let it drip down. And now I'm going to set this down. And you can either, either use a, a dryer and dry it, which I'm trying to show you mine, but it's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> you can use one of these dryers and, and dry it. But I don't want to drive you crazy with that noise. So I'm going to set it aside and let it dry on its own. But then this rest that's left, after this is dry, I can put another layer. And this time I can either do it the same way or pick it up with parchment paper. And look how it just gives it some pretty, yeah. hmm. pretty texture to it. Yeah. What a pretty background that is. You can do so much with it. I'm gonna, and then I, I sometimes I have half done backgrounds laying. Oh, that's pretty. When I have this extra color, I can do something. Yeah. With it, just pick up from here. Look how pretty. Oh, I love those Ooh. colors. How quickly that 
added so much to that. Is that pickled? Is that also pickled raspberry? Or pickled? Um, this pink mm -hmm. is a Dilutions ink. Oh, Dilutions. That's pretty. Yeah, it's called Bubblegum Pink. Bubblegum. That's pretty. Bubblegum <laughs> Pink. So something else to set aside. I always have a lot more to set aside. I like that. Very pretty. So I think you got a lot of cool ideas on what to work with. And um, I can't wait to see what everybody does with it. And I have one more section of scripture that I really would like to make sure that we share. But I encourage you all to you know, look at your life and think of how you can make your life saltier. Fill up that salt shaker and just spread that salt all over the place the same way that that ink runs and spreads. And uh, it's what we're called to do. It's what we're meant to do. God designed us to glorify him. So historically, salt was important in the ancient Near East because it represented purity, the flavor of food, and it retarded decay in food. And in small doses, I didn't know this, it fertilized land. Oh. Jesus implied by this metaphor that his disciples could possibly affect the world. They had the opportunity through their lives and witness to bring blessings to others to retard the natural decay that sin produces in life. Hmm. Isn't that awesome? I thought that was so interesting, yeah. right? I got that from Dr. Constable. He has some great notes on the <clears throat> I thought thrown out of, of the earth was also to produce fruit to God. Jesus' main point, however, seems to be that if his disciples do not fulfill their essential function, they are good for nothing. Mm. Is that wow. true? Our purpose in life, our identity in life is in Christ. If we find our identity and what we do, I'll never forget so long ago. I always, you know, what's funny as a little girl, I always wanted to be an artist. Really? No. And I never had true artistic talent, like to paint something or draw something amazing. Yeah. You know, I have a lot of creativity. That I, I do. I have a lot of ideas. There's lots of craziness going on up here. <laughs> My mind is on the go, on the go, on the go. Lots of ideas. But our you know, technique, like my friend uh, Arlene, who is in the backstage of Faith Art Journaling, but so important to our ministry, she has great artistic uh, talent. Yeah. Annabelle, sometimes we'll get frustrated. She's like, how do you do that so pretty? And what do we always tell her, Annabelle? She went to school for that. She I'm like, went, to school for that. <laughs> went to school for that. She's trained. That's her gift. That's her talent. She just Absolutely. woke up this beautiful handwriting and and just amazing, beautiful works. Yeah. And when I was a little girl, I wanted to be an artist. But obviously, I realized quickly I did not have the talent to really make it as an artist. And I need to you know, pay bills one day. And so then I ended up becoming a, a teacher as I went into different directions of life, wanting to be a pilot or, or uh, um, then a pediatrician. And then I ended up being a teacher. And I loved being a teacher. And my favorite part was in elementary teaching art. It was so much fun. But I remember always feeling part of me in like I really never got to be who I wanted to be. And here you are. And not there yet. Bear oh, with you, you got some beautiful stuff that you do. So, no, no. But my point is that I always kept identifying myself by what I was going to do with my life. Mm -hmm. so I was a teacher, mm -hmm. but it wasn't enough. I wanted to be more. So I would always joke around and say, oh, I want to write a book. I had all these ideas for books and children's books. So I started thinking, wow, it's dawned on me. I was in my 30s and I was saying, you know what? I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> I would walk around and say that. Why? Because I had so many ideas of new things I wanted to learn and do with my life. But then I realized, I was like, wait a minute. My identity is not in what I'm doing. My identity is in Christ. And that's why I kept missing something because I hadn't had that aha moment that came to me when I came to realize that what I do does not make me who I am. I am a daughter of the King. I am a child of God. My identity is in Christ. I'm going to do lots of things. And ironically, yes, Annabelle, how funny. I end up coming back 
to art, you know, where it all began. <laughs> I was yeah. always a kid with dirty hands and painting and making a mess and, and cutting dolls' hairs and painting their faces. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it's so funny how I'm living my dream now because I have the opportunity to play with art. And yeah. how better to do it than to do it for the Lord? You know, mm -hmm. and he trained me to be a teacher since I was 14. I started volunteering out of school, tutoring and working with children. And then I got into educating the teachers. And all that education that I received formally and informally in, in the world field of education, here I am tying in, you know, art that I loved and education that God guided me to be trained in to teach art, but art that serves him. So yes. I, I feel so blessed and so excited to be able to do this. But I want to remind you all that your identity should be in Christ and in not what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're definitely using your gifts, Genevieve, to glorify the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm trying. And thanks to you all, because we have such a wonderful time. Yeah. And, you know, if Carol and Lily and, you know, Jennifer and everybody wasn't here, you know, it's so uh, important for us to fellowship together and to hear from them mm -hmm. and to know that, you know, their ideas and that they're being encouraged, that their salt shakers mm -hmm. are filled mm -hmm. so they can go out and share all that salt so keep accumulating all that salt and be sure to share it amen, amen. so let's see what you ladies have going on before we we wrap things uh, up because we've been on for a while who's going to i'm first? redoing mine so i'll have to share it on the website later. <laughs> <laughs> I got, oh that's pretty so pretty yeah. Yeah. You're so beautiful. That's so really pretty. And you know what I did? I used the soul to draw the world. <laughs> oh, the bottom of it. Oh, yes, oh. exactly. That's what I did too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It really helped. It was a circle. Yeah. Hey, Bob, what, what continent is that, please? <laughs> <laughs> please label your continent, Bob. <laughs> North America. <laughs> Antarctica. <laughs> I don't do well in geography, people. So uh, I, don't know. I still have to figure out what to do with the little the steak on the one side. <laughs> uh, honestly, I so see that page with a highlight of blue, light blue, light blue, blue a lighter blue, and then it'll kind of camouflage in. Okay. That mine orange did it camouflage right. in because I got that orange and I kind of just went I with it. it. Okay. And Made it cool. yeah. So that's a suggestion that I have. And I love the mixed media making things imperfect because it's very forgiving of a mistake. It's very forgiving of a, a slight uh, imperfection. And yeah. it takes the pressure off. When I first started scrapbooking, I would measure everything and everything had to be precise. And I realized I was stressing myself out trying to make it perfect. And that's absolutely not what this is about. Mm -hmm. This is about just enjoying, you know, time in the Lord and enjoying exploring yeah. art and different techniques. And um, you'll always have moments in your life for some people like Annabelle that go and do something and then erase the whole <laughs> thing that they've done and start over. But that's okay. Annabelle, let's see. did you really get rid of it? My song. My salt? No, it's still here, but I'm, I'm making another one. A new background. Okay, that's a good point. Yeah. Sometimes maybe you get a paper, uh, uh, you know, a page, mm -hmm. and you're so miserably, you know, unhappy about it. Yeah. Take off a piece of it. Yeah. Don't burn yeah. it completely. Because a lot of times you can use it as a layer, as a tag, yeah. as a background for a card. Yeah. There's so many different things that you could always mm -hmm. use it for. Right. I mean, you know, if it's the first time you do it, like me, I just, I didn't like how it came out so I'm just doing it again but literally the first time I did that yeah but um yeah that's just, okay you can yeah. do it again <laughs> just doing hey, another one remember yeah. God made us all perfectly imperfect yes ladies mm -hmm. we're well over the hour so I want to go ahead and wrap things up mm -hmm. I want to remind everybody to please Visit our website, faithartjournaling.net, and sign up for our emails so you can be alerted to any new events and activities and things coming up. And be sure to follow the fun on Instagram and like our Facebook page and share it. Uh, this video is 
today, please like and share it. It's so easy to spread the word of God in this way. And if you have churches that are looking for new things to do with their ladies group or with their children's group, or maybe a private school for an aftercare uh, activity, there's so many different things that you can do. This can be part of a Sunday school. It can be a youth group activity. You know, Wednesday nights, I know there's a lot of children's ministries. Mm -hmm. and something so easy that you can do and you can do it in person or you can do it online like we do. So yeah. as a leader or instructor, you can watch the video and see how to do it and do it on your own. Um, and then, you know, give your own take on it. You can simplify it for younger children or if you want it to be a more in-depth study, you can... Uh, definitely spend more time reading the word of God together. Uh, I would like to also invite you to our Bible study that we have on Friday mornings. I uh, have a group of ladies and we read word for word the Bible. And this week we're in Matthew 14. We're going to read the whole chapter and discuss it together as a group. So if you're interested in digging deeper, uh, definitely join us. So this week, please reflect upon how have you enhanced the taste in your life? Have you purified your life? Is your salt shaker full? How can you fill it up and how can you shake it up? <laughs> I always come, songs always come to mind. Oh my goodness. And does your life make others thirst? When people see you, are they thirsty? Are they curious? You know, what is she doing? How is she doing that? It's Jesus. You know, when I've gone through some really tough times in my life, I've had people tell me, oh, I don't know how, how you, you, you do it. I go, it's not me. It's the Lord in me. So, um, oh, goodness. Oh, Betty, ouch. I just saw that. I just oh. saw that. So we love you, Betty, and each and every woman out there. And we are praying for you oh, all. Oh, Betty. I hope that it's not COVID. Yeah, definitely not for you and your your safety mm -hmm. um for the bible studies we have a friday morning one that i facilitate i do have a partner uh at new testament baptist church that also does a bible study wednesday nights and they do the same thing as far as reading through the bible and discussing it so be for, be sure to direct message me and i'll be happy to give you the zoom information mm -hmm. on those two links of those two bible studies if you're ever interested for a friday morning study or a Wednesday night study. But uh, we're so glad that you're all here with us. And we just pray that you have a wonderful day. We pray for our country. We pray for safety. Please be alert these next few days and be sure to make your life salty. And don't forget next week we meet Wednesday instead of Tuesday. Yes, yes. for the next two the weeks. Next two weeks. I apologize about that. But unfortunately, I need a medical procedure uh, done and the doctor can only do it that day. So next week on Wednesday, the 10th, we will be doing under God's wing, under God's wing. He is our protector. Amen. Amen. So for that one, if you've got some feathers laying around, <laughs> get some feathers. And if not, our lesson online also offers feather templates. So you'll be able to get that. And the following week on the 17th, also a Wednesday, will be Tough Turkey on the website. So we need to be tough turkeys, right? Yep. Yeah. With Thanksgiving coming around, we've got yep. turkey talk to do. <laughs> and they have feathers at the dollar store, guys. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And like I said, if not, you can do clip art feathers and yep. uh, cut them out. Mm -hmm. And then after that will be the week of Thanksgiving. So that uh, day, honestly, I'm going to be traveling. And I think a lot of people are going to be traveling and busy with the holidays. But we're not going to neglect you. We're going to have a video being played at 9 a.m. on that Tuesday. So we could still offer Faith Art Journaling for that week. For those of you that may not have plans or a busy schedule that day. Uh, so we'll have something special out there. So be sure to... Sign up for our email so you get the latest and greatest of information and keep a watch on us on social media and spread God's word. Live salty and shine your light, right? Right. We'll have a margarita with the salt rim. <laughs> <laughs> In yeah, no. It's a little early. <laughs> yeah, it's a little early for margarita. <laughs> I didn't say now. <laughs> and if we're going to encourage a margarita, let's make sure we encourage one margarita. One margarita. <laughs> In moderation, one margarita. Remember, one tequila, two tequila, three tequila. 
No, 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 no. We are not encouraging that. All right. Love to you all. Have a great day. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Have a good week. <laughs>